In this tutorial, I will show you how to monitor a log file with event century in real time. We're going to pick a flat file that is an unstructured um, log file to monitor. And to make things a little bit more interesting, we're going to update the Windows update.log file. Since it actually serves a purpose, we can um, log the status and uh, search through the status of uh, any sort of Windows updates that are running on a machine or on multiple machines. So the file we're going to monitor is the Windows Update.log file in the C Windows directory. The first step when monitoring a log file, and in this case we're just going to consolidate the log file into the database so that we can search it. And then of course we can apply that to multiple computers as well so that we can search across more than one host with the event century web reports. So you'll notice we have a log files uh, package container here. And the first step when we're monitoring a log file is we have to define the file. And we can do that with the define files and file types uh, link here and as well as the link here in the ribbon. We can see the existing definitions here on our log files. And we can see that a few here already defined for DHCP, IIS, and for the Exchange server. I'm going to add a new one here. We're going to start with a descriptive name, and we'll just call it the Windows Update Log. In this case, it's a non-delimited file, so it's not a, a delimited file like a DHCP or IIS log file or Apache log file would be. It's just a, a file that has, not, has no structure other than having one line of text at a time. And for the path, we can actually browse for that file. So we're going to go to Windows directory and we're going to pick the Windows update log. In this case, we're going to change the C Windows to system root uh, environment variable in case we push this out to other computers that have Windows installed on a different in a different directory. We're not going to include subdirectories, of course, since we're just monitoring a single file. And uh, we're going to skip the notes and just hit OK. So we have this log um, file defined now. The next step is to tell Event Century what type of content we want to monitor of that file and where that content should go. And for that purpose, we're going to create a new package. We're going to hit Add here, and we're calling the Windows Update Log again. And we're going to assign it in this case to the default group, which is where our test computer test one here is located. So the package changes color indicating it's assigned. And now we add a log file. And we have all the defined log files uh, available here. Uh, we're going to pick the one that we just added, the Windows Update Log. The Windows Update Log is now here. And you'll notice we have two tabs available. We have Database Consolidation and Event Log Alerts. For now, we're just going to consolidate the information to the database, but you can also configure the log file monitoring to log specific lines in the log file that contain specific text um, to the event log, and this subsequently gets an email alert, for example. So we're going to start by adding the primary database here, and we're just going to include and log everything to the database. We're not going to make any exceptions or any filtering. Um, if we wanted to exclude certain lines, we could do that here. For example, we could say, well, let's exclude any line that includes the word debug. So here it's set to include, and our exclusions are listed here. And this can be switched around. You could say, you know what, I only want to log lines to the database um, that include the word error in the text. But again, we're going to just go back to the default, which means we include everything, we log everything to the database. So the package, the, the log file was defined. We have a package. It's assigned. And all we need to do now is save the configuration and move over to the application event log, as always, and to wait for that 1035 event. I'm going to hit the refresh button here. The network services are a little faster in picking up the configuration updates. And here is our 1035 events. And if you take a quick peek here at the event, you'll notice that the Windows Update Log package is assigned. 
So let's head over to the web reports, um, which is where we would see the actual log file. So we go to logs and we go to log file, not to delimit it again, it's just a log file. And we'll see that there's no data there yet, and that's because that log file has not been changed. We're going to trigger some changes here. We're just going to uh, open up the Windows update. I'm going to do some things. The first thing I'll do is we'll check for updates, which should already trigger some text in the log file. But after that, we're going to install one of these optional updates to trigger some text in the debug log. So let's take a look to see if some activity has already been generated here. We're going to move back here and hit the search button again. And nothing quite yet, so we'll try this again. This time we'll install one of these optional updates here. does want us to restart, uh, which is uh, surprising and very unusual. <coughs> We're not going to do that and instead hit the switch button again since this should have triggered some text and it did. Success. So this is the overview here. In this particular case, of course, it's not helpful because we only have one computer. But if you had more hosts in here, then we would see the computer names in here or more log files uh, and so forth. So we're going to switch to the detailed view. Where we can see the contents of the log file now. We can make this a little bit bigger. We can also pick which columns we're interested in. So for example, in this case, since we know um, they're all coming from the same computer, uh, they're also coming, we, we're not interested in the file path and the file name because it's going to always be the same. We'll just hide them. And then we have a little more room here for the actual log file. And as we scroll down here, it's paginated. We can change that. And let's say we want to see 100 results per page. Here's an update. And yeah, it's it's pretty nice, so we can see the contents of the log file here as it's being collected by Event Century. So what's really nice about this is, first of all, you have the information in an alternate place. So if the log file gets deleted, you still have it in the database. If you're monitoring 50 servers, for example, you have the log files from all 50 servers in there, and you can search all 50 log files at once. And you can easily search for text. For example, if you wanted to search just for the download manager in here, then we can do that. We'll just go up here we'll say content and we'll say download manager hit search and we only see content that contains the word download manager and we can see here that files were downloaded and so forth. You can also export information into a variety of formats including comma separated value files, XML, JSON, RSS, and of course PDF. And if we go back to the summary page, the filter stays in place and then we can now see that we have uh, 20 lines that match this download manager. And that's how easy and how quickly you can add a file and monitor it in real time with the Mint Century. Thank you for watching.